Good morning and happy Friday. Thank God it's Friday. I hope that you guys have had a wonderful week so far. I have been a little bit under the weather, but I think I feel a little better today. But can you, as you can hear from my voice, I'm not all the way out the uh, in the clear. So I did not plan on doing a video this morning. I plan on just, you know, getting some tea and some Theraflu and just sleeping out the rest of this little, you know, this grungy stuff I still feel and, and you know on me but the Lord just laid it on my heart to share with you guys real quick this video and so what I'm going to talk to you very briefly about this morning is what God gave me and what he's saying is God wants your loyalty the message here is God wants your loyalty what is loyalty? I'm going to give you a definition. Loyalty is a faithfulness that is steadfast in the face of any temptation to renounce, desert, or betray. I'll read that again. Loyalty is a faithfulness that is steadfast in the face of any temptation to renounce, desert, or betray. One more time. Loyalty is a faithfulness that is steadfast, steadfast in the face of any temptation to renounce, desert, or betray. This is what God is wanting from his people. God is not impressed by works and sacrifices. He is not looking for your talents and your abilities. He does not want to hear many words of what you want to do and what you intend to do, but he wants your loyalty. And remember, I spoke about uh, in another video, Matthew 22, 36 through 40. In this particular passage of scripture, it's talking about what is the greatest commandment in the Bible? The greatest commandment is, is that we love the Lord our God with all our hearts, with all our mind, and with all our soul. And we love our neighbor as ourselves. That's the second greatest. But the first greatest is that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, our mind, and our soul. That is being loyal, steadfast loyalty. God is expecting that. And that is what he's requiring of us. It is not in our many works. It's not in our many talents. It's not in your intentions and how well you pray, how well you give. He's looking at loyalty because you know these things, you can do all that and still not be loyal to God. If you think about, there are some relationships that people are together, they live in the same place, they're in a marriage even, and they can pay their bills. They're paying bills together, they're taking care of the mortgage, the house, they are taking care of the children, they take whoever to ballet practice, whoever to football practice, they go to each other's events, they support each other, they run a business together, they have employees together, um, they go to parents' birthdays, grandparents, uh, the relatives, in-laws, exchange presents. This person is good at giving you the best gifts, exchanges, whatever. Doing all those things that encompasses being in a relationship. But in all of that, that person can also, in all of that, in all that they're doing, they are not loyal to you. And we read about that all the time, right? People that are together, they've been together for years. They're doing all these great things. They appear to be good from the to outsiders. But at the end of it all, there is no loyalty. There is someone who has a heart of one or both or a piece of it or whatever the case may be. God is wanting all of us, all of us every part of us. He wants our loyalty. He wants us to be steadfast in our faithfulness, that we will not be in a place that we will renounce him. The temptations that will come, that will cause you to want to renounce him, that will, will cause you to want to betray him, that will cause you to want to desert him. And some of us will say, Lord, I would never do that. Well, when you sin and when you do certain things and when you don't obey his commandments, you are in essence betraying him renouncing him in some cases and you are deserting him every time we decide to do things our way and not the way that he is commanded when we decide that we want to walk in disobedience we are betraying him we are deserting him god wants our loyalty you think about any relationship that you are in you want loyalty if you are with a significant other i'm talking about people who are just not all over but people who truly want and even people that are out there 
energy and they want someone to be faithful and loyal to them as well. So you know what that is. We exercise those things within our uh, earthly relationships with our children, our parents, our families. We exhibit loyalty with whatever societies or fraternities or sororities you are in. You are loyal to that. You are faithful. Okay. But when it comes to the things of God, we tend to be slacking. We tend to want to resort, resort to or have this resolve of God is good. God is kind. God is faithful. But God is requiring of his people to be loyal to him. And God God is not a God that is unfair. He knows that within our flesh dwells no good thing and it is not easy. It does not come natural. Living right, doing the things that God has called us to do, that is just not something that comes naturally for us. But he has given the Holy Spirit and he has said, come to me and I will help you. Come to me, all of you are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Come to me, take my yoke upon you. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. So he is willing to help us. Where else can you go where someone says, okay, here you, I want to help you and I'm going to give you what you need to be successful. I'm going to help you. I'm going to show you. You don't have to be experienced. You don't have to be trained. You don't have to be well versed in this, but come to me and I will help you. So he is saying, come to me. I will show you how to do everything. And as I told you, how can you do that? It's going to be spending time in his presence. It's going to be coming and just taking time to pray to God, getting in his word, getting before him. And it's making that decision to say, Lord, I want to be loyal to you. Teach me how and making yourself available for him to show you. We're coming into the house of God. We're going to the house of God. A lot of people are raising their hands in the presence of the Lord Sunday after Sunday and your hands are filthy. Your hands are filthy. You've been elsewhere and it's becoming so easy for people to do. And you know what gets easier? Because your heart is becoming hardened. Your understanding is becoming darkened. And you don't want that to happen. You want to still be able to hear the voice of God and follow. Let me read something to you and I'm going to close. Deuteronomy 17. Some people are like, it's the Old Testament. The Old Testament still has relevance. Deuteronomy 17 and 1 says, this is God. This is saying, you shall not sacrifice to the Lord your God a bull or sheep which has any blemish or defect. For that, for that is an abomination to the Lord your God. Again, Deuteronomy 17 and 1 says, You shall not sacrifice to the Lord your God a bull or sheep which has any blemish or defect. For that is an abomination to the Lord your God. Back in the days, they sacrificed bulls and sheep and doves and pigeons and all these things. They used to bring in turtle doves. They used to bring to the presence of the Lord. Once Jesus died on the cross, we became the sacrifice. While we are human and we are naturally flawed, what God is talking about is when we're walking in willful sin and we're carrying these flaws and these, these, these blemishes, and we bring these things and these defects to him when we continue to walk in deliberate sin, in deliberate disobedience to him. And you're coming to him and you're offering the sacrifices of praise, which is filthy. It comes up to him as a stench, as a stink. Because we're not loyal. There are other idols in your lives. There are other things in your lives that has your that has your attention. And you're being deceived by the enemy because he's letting you feel like it's not that bad because at least you still do this or that. Wake up from that lie. God is not accepting defective worship and praise. God is not fect, uh, 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 taking prayers he's not hearing that that's coming from a defected source and i'm not talking about the frailties of humanity and you being human but when you're putting your hands in that which is filthy you're making up a decision and you're making a choice to do this while you hear the tugging of the holy spirit saying no and you keep saying yes 
and going, I'm sorry, but take this, Lord. It's an abomination. And he's not accepting those things anymore. We're giving grace and mercy every day so we can say, Lord, forgive me and start new and get right. Remember, it is not the Lord who does evil or, or when things happen in our lives. It is the enemy. So where your loyalty lies, there you will get the rewards. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is what? Eternal life is life. And he wants to give it to us more abundantly. God wants your loyalty. God wants your loyalty. He wants all of you. He wants all of me. Let us continue to aim for that, to push for that. Pray for those things. Pray that God would help you to be able to do the things that you cannot do in your flesh. Let's give them all of us, guys. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye.